What's popping? Imagination. 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 Imaginary numbers, while they do be dead ass, no cap, kinda wacky, I'ma make it understandable for y'all with the use of Gen Z slang. The Ohio numbers, what are they made of? To find that out, we first gotta take a quick look at square numbers. These dogs are the light skin starers of basic math. To find a perfect square, take any number and dupe it, and then multiply them together. There's a perfect square. You can do the same with negatives, however you may have noticed that only positive integers are mu. At no point do you get a negative number as the output. So, around 1545, some Rizzler called Geronimo Cardano rolled around on TikTok in search of Lux Max and Clubs. And that's when he came up with R. The imaginary unit. I is the square root of negative 1, which pretty much means that when you multiply I by itself, you get negative 1. On guard, this may come across as cap. When you try to square root negative 1 on a normal calculator, it'll spit you out a down bad response. But just hear me out, pal. Imaginary units are built different. So let's put on our thinking caps and by harnessing 200. Level 3, yeah, Ohio gods. What the actual frack am I saying? The number line, the rail line. It contains all of the positive, negative integers, decimal fractions, and everything in between. Now, this Cardano guy went and took a sip of the Grimace shake and cranked some 90s and, like, literally rotated the rail line by 90 degrees. And bam! The imaginary number line. Now, let's play a quick spot the difference game here. 99% can't see it. And that's because there the, the pretty much is no difference. Let's call the imaginary rail grid thingy the complex plane. And no, it's not a goofy R plane. It's referring to a 2D surface that expands indefinitely in all directions. Like a Minecraft flat world, except without the villagers. <laughs> so the complex plane and the Cartesian plane pretty much describe the exact same thing. An environment containing x and y axes in which points can be placed. The key distinction between the two is how the complex numbers perform in game. Their notation is written as simple addition problems like What's 9 plus 10? 21? You stupid! It's a real number being added or subtracted by an imaginary number. So if the smurf cat wanted to find the point 3 plus 2i, add 3 across the real axis and add 2 on the imaginary and BAM! There's your point! Alrighty, now turn your math maxing dial up to 11 out of 10, because now we're going to have a look at modules. <laughs> if you wanted to find if a complex number was bigger than another, you can't just do this. To get them bussin', you got to draw this here, the square root. And inside of it, you square the real number and the imaginary number, and add them together. Okay fam, now do the basic arithmetic, and there you go. That may have felt like navigating the house after the lobotomy. So well, now we're gonna have a quick yeah session about complex operations. To add, you simply add the two real numbers first, and then Flowberry fizz the imaginary ones too. And there's your sum. And for subtraction, it's legit the same, but with minus. But no. But multiplication and division is like a little bit harder. You can follow this formula. The real numbers multiplied minus the imaginary numbers multiplied is the new real number. And the first real number multiplied by the second imaginary number plus the second real number multiplied by the first imaginary number is the new imaginary. Only in Ohio complex number. Only in Ohio simple Okay, so the division's even worse. Uh, what you gotta get your fraction and multiply it by the conjugate of the denominator. What? Okay, so it's that, but the sign is flipped. That's the conjugate. So, what? Once you simplify that expression, you break it up to the real part and the imaginary part. That's correct. Thanks for watching this Khan Academy lesson. <laughs> but now we're gonna move on to stuff you only experience at 3am in FNAF, bruh. Or in a mathematical programming class. The manual box set. A thing that looks like something an iPad kid would draw is a backrooms entity looking fractal that is generated from this math right here. Okay, but, but what is a fractal? <laughs> Take Robux, Robux for instance. The hexagon has finite detail around the edge. The difference is that this geometry has infinite detail around the perimeter. Therefore, when you generate the Mandelbrot set, you get weird stuff like itself in itself. 
That's crazy. Then I was crazy once. They locked me in a room. I rather room. I rather room with rats. And rats make me crazy. Crazy? I was crazy once. They locked me in a room. I rather room. I rather room with rats. And rats make me crazy. Crazy? How? So when you run this equation in a computer program, it generates this fractal. How does the math work, bro? Z starts at zero. And for every point in this area, we want to check. What are we checking? Huh? Is if the modulus exceeds two. If it does, it's a sussy bucker. Sussy bucker. And this kid named Finger oh, ain't in the set. Oh, we are iterating the function. In sigma male terms, we are multiplying our mewing streak by itself and then adding our riz. Our riz is a complex number and it represents a given point. If the Discord mod of Z reaches above 2 after iterating a bunch, it doesn't deserve high spice. But if it stays under 2, the original complex number gets mapped to the complex plane. So it does this for every point that it can, and you get that. It's pretty wild. So we've talked about the Quandale Dingle numbers and what they are and what they represent. We've learned how to do arithmetic operations with them and their applications in fractals such as the Mandelbrot set. Now, try to avoid the doom scrolling pit of doom. Growing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.